you first time on my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're new to my channel, I'm an SB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life stories. And today's topic obviously is going to be an autistic related topic because someone suggested this to me and I'm not sure if it was a dig or not, but hey, this is going to just be one for anyone that is curious. And this topic is going to be called based on does autistics tend to overthink too much? If you're into any of these autism related topics or mental health topics or what have you, I try to do this as much as I can. So if you want to show your support by subscribing and joining me on the bandwagon and being the YouTube family for me feel free to do so also if you do decide turn on the notification bell because you can get up to date hopefully to when the new content is all about so the question obviously lies in within do us autistics overthink too much well this can vary from person to person you know and depending on the everyday situations we face it's not just also autistics that tend to overthink I believe I believe also that there are normal people like the neurotypicals that ain't on the spectrum that does the overthinking as well or just normal everyday people they tend to overthink too much as well it's like also in saying this though with the with this it comes to a price of people overthinking even though now overthinking is now classified as a form of a disease because obviously anxiety and some other mental health disorders do come in hand on this however Yet, after all, just got to remember, we are all humans, obviously, aren't we? And that we tend to sometimes, you know, be curious as well to know what is going on or what have you, why it's happening, how it's happening and all that. And sometimes in myself, I've learnt now to try not to rush the process of certain things that I go through, be it whatever it may be. And hopefully in due time that the answers will lie within of what I may be experiencing. Sometimes I'm saying this though, I'm trying my hardest just to try and enjoy life regardless of this, you know, thought pattern that goes on in my head, you know, of the ruminating and all that, that I'm going to explain just real brief on this right now as well. But just as a reminder though, I can't stress it enough. All autistics ain't the same that are on the spectrum. Every autistic will have a specific need or specific requirement, no matter how high or low on the spectrum they are. And then, as we know, with that medical model that's been put into place of the diagnostic manual 5, that there are some autistics that may need more help than others from others around us, regardless what it may be, he said. So, I'm saying this, though, just to explain a little bit more into this, is basically, I believe sometimes for me, it can be a real difficult time for me sometimes in regards to of the important stuff that I focus on time and time again be it relationships be it like a certain situation be it like in the past how I've overcome it right now and it is basically you know why it happened in the first place of this abusive relationship I had you know sometimes it's also the easier stuff that gets to me at times you know but you know the everyday tasks such as you know do I want to get up in the morning do I you know if I do get up in the morning, what do I need to do? You know, it's just certainly little, little everyday easy things that maybe t many people take for granted, I believe, as well. Um, sometimes in saying this, though, I believe we do need to t question it in ourselves about what really goes on, or as people may question it, well, what is really going on in the narcissistic brain? I think from memory I did the neurotypical versus the autistic brain, what the key differences are, if I haven't, I'll hopefully try and do it so it should be somewhere around hopefully on my you know playlist if not just let me know in the comment section below but in saying this though you got to remember though um sometimes for some of us aspects or autistics what have you this goes with me included <coughs> that we may tend to worry about something like independence or living on our own or but another situation, as I said so many times before that I can't stress it enough, maybe some of us autistics trying to be in a relationship or what have you. You know, um, we come to the point, though, that we start stressing out so much to the point that we start ruminating. That term I'll briefly explain in a minute what it means or what it entails. So just bear with me while I'm expressing this out. Sometimes after worrying about something for a long constant of time, for example, maybe fear of failing, you know, be it whatever we are doing at that given moment of time here, so I believe that sometimes that I believe in myself that, me included, that when I'm ruminating over certain things, it's like 
especially when it comes down to my social anxiety, you know, when I'm pushing, trying to push myself as much as I can in a group of people, just knowing, you know, how people will accept me, what will they think of me and all that, that's entailed in my mindset as I'm, you know, not just ruminating over these thoughts, but as I'm doing this, it comes into a series of, a state of overdrive or panic and stuff and whatnot as well, not just the fear of failing something in particular, be it whatever it may be. Sometimes in some cases, though, people that does have this kind of problem, that overthinking and a logical thing, basically, we need to look at also for the sake of the people with autism, basically, the variation and degree of difficulties that we may experience in display, displaying in such of social interaction versus your this is with your peers or just social interaction, just one on one, verbal and non verbal communication. However, and some some of the repetitive patterns, because as we know, sometimes when it comes down to it, with the rumination or just the overthinking analog that we do for some of us statistics or just normal people, we tend to repeat things over and over again. As I said before, I'll address it hopefully of the repetitive behaviours and the link in the eye bar above me. If you want to find out more of what I'm talking about, it based on the obsessions and interests versus repetitive behaviours, which I'm hoping is still there, so you can click on that eye bar above me. But moving on, now to the next hopefully brief bit I want to quickly address to you is what causes us to overthink, you know, the causes versus, you know, the reasons to maybe why it's happening. And I have put into place just earlier, as I said, how it works for me, but there is a few other underlying factors to why it may be happening of this. So I want to put it out right now to you to consider this for the moment that people with autism has a surplus supply of basically synapses in the brain. As we know that normally during the early developmental stages of growth or of our brain, however, that we go through a process called the pruning stage or the what have you. What I mean here is that we're, this is where excess of synapses are removed to essentially streamline the neurological pathways and networks. So you can imagine, like, in some ways, to gain a better understanding to what I'm clearly illustrating about this, besides the word pruning, you could imagine, like, our brain, stem cells and everything that's connected into the wiring of it, like a little tree, you know? Imagine it as a tree, and sometimes we need a bit of pruning here and there, despite our, you know, wiring of the brain. So therefore, in the saying this though, however, in this process, however, people with autism, the printing process is however diminished. What I mean here is that the brain and owls of the autistics are connected by differently, okay? But what I just clearly ima- illustrated, just imagine it as a little tree or neural pathways and stuff. Imagine the normal brain versus the autistic brain. In this, however, there are three factors or experiences that we may go through in this everyday process, and they are as follows. Number one, I say should our mind, it may vary from person to person on the autism spectrum as well. So, due to the extra amount of synapses that are in our brain, with every thought that we may have, there will bound to be more bigger cluster of neurological activity going on. Example-wise is that there are some people out there that may experience some form of noise better than others, that is related to their thoughts. This can be beneficial as it is a great source of creativity, but at times it can then be quite the opposite, become a challenge to focus on focusing on some of the necessary tasks that is given to us that we've set at hand. Some people may be able to focus on one task all the way through the day, basically, for a long period of time, which may lead to the ability of obsessing into it and that then they are harder to pull away from that set task given it and the autistic wants to get it done maybe and to get it done thorough I know I would also as well as in saying this to be sure that they are thorough and more which again I'll address that into the obsessions and interests in the eye card above me or below me this can also be then called cluster focus what this would mean as a definition that one given thought will give rise to another that will then split apart the two considerations and that will then branch off to a particular area of thought by that time that initial thought maybe is then gone. 
Some people on the spectrum have or may have trouble retracing their steps or retracing their thought patterns or what have you of what they've been doing. It's a chain of thoughts that can then lead to wonderful insights, but then you get in it. That can be quite the opposite. It can also be unproductive process when it's unguided or derailed. Number two, deep thoughts. Some of our thoughts that are that are autistic can also be so deep and abstract, and that they may have problems into putting words into words. Because of this, they will then in turn, with the abstraction of their thought, will then explore deeper. And when it's unguided and derailed again, it's not always necessarily to be productive. This can lead to the part where I may drift myself into that state of deep thoughts to point out any actions that will then become automatic actions for me to, you know, do or think or whatever it may be, I believe. I am, as I'm sure for many of us Aspies and Autistics alike, have many tendencies to keep repeating the same thoughts over and over again in conjunction inside our heads. And sometimes we may eventually speak it out of our thought patterns of what's going on in our thought. You know, as if we're talking to ourselves and many people give us a crazy stare thinking, what the hell are they doing? Or what? why are they saying this in the first place? You know, you get all looked at just because you're weird and doing your own natural thing. Believe you me, I'm one of them. You know, I get looked upon so much and it's just like, well, what do you think I'm doing? You know, and sometimes I get a backlash of certain other, you know, comments and stuff from people which I'm doing my darn hardest just to ignore because obviously, you know, okay, many people may think I'm still crazy, but that's for them to say and hopefully in saying this, I believe in my pattern of what I believe of who I am and what I am. But in saying this though, as I said, though... While that repetition of thoughts is running through the head of mine here, say, I may then become obsessed with it, and then only then sometimes, for the sake of it, as I said before, anxiety plays a key role here, and it's a real devil of conscious thought patterns and that that will come into my play. And sometimes in saying this, with anxiety may come to another mental health disorder, which is paranoia, you know? If someone that I have spoken to wasn't giving me my full exact attention to to me or the topics that I've been answering about or some of the answers that I needed the answers to sometimes is that I can try to detach myself from that thought from that given moment hopefully after ruminating it for quite some time until it's the point of state of overdrive and my meltdowns, shutdowns and every other sensory overload that goes on in this head of mine. Now and again, I will do my best to my ability to find a distraction from all this thought patterns, hearsay, and then, and only then, you know, due to that associability, I can try recalling some of the certain moments of the day of what happened and what have you, and I'm pretty sure maybe many of this at a different angle, you know, of whatever happened, hearsay, and to see if I can have any right and decent solutions for myself before hopefully it makes me you know the crazy you could call it i consider to what i say and will do have some con- consequences along through my actions and thoughts of what i get up to regardless of pe- like i said many people may look at me strangely and in saying this though i shall have the right to take on the full accountability for my own actions that was done wrong or even hopefully in saying this that if i see something differently from you guys as a tip here from me to you guys to hopefully stop that assumption or that, you know, running phrase thought thinking, you know, where did I go wrong? Just gently tell me because obviously I would like to try and, well, not perfect it as such, but being able to learn from what I done wrong or said wrong because obviously everyone in this world deals with things in a different manner. So what does this mean for me? When it comes to what and how I think, or even to this point of day, to how and what I say things, obviously. Because as I said before, many people get so frustrated to the call with me on how I say things, and it's not the way they may see it, or it's not the way how I see it versus thing. And of course, a bit of a fraction here and there between me and the recipient on the other end of what I say and do, right? Um, in saying this, though, I can clearly illustrate a long list of examples right now to how this will work. And that first example, but just a real brief one, is if I was doing a job 
and then when it tried to ask for clarification, I may get it wrong, okay? I'm guessing everybody will do what I want once in a while. Even if I am given a set of tasks or a list of instructions to do in that given time frame, if I was working in a particular environment here, say, you know, I would like to try to make sure before I start my work, be it if it's something like on a computer or whatever it may be, that I'll go back to the person that given me that set task and hopefully I'm saying this to clarify then and saying this also for that clarification. I'll do my very darn hardest to actually maybe write some keynotes beside those list of key tasks that were given to me. So hopefully that then and only then I can refer back to and whatnot. Last but not least is the one that you may be waiting for short for you guys. I've also noticed with me there is like sometimes some tremendous effort for me to focus on an everyday situation at hand in itself and on any of the possible solutions yet many of the solutions that are given or I faced I tend to look at the solutions as well so therefore what I'm meaning here is while I'm thinking in that state of overdrive or whatever situation I'm facing I might try to break it down into possible steps versus solutions to overcome whatever problem it may be and if it, I had that same problem that arose again then I'll have to just try to learn to let it go, I guess. Let me share ruminating properly here just quite quickly. Sometimes with rumination, this can be for many of us a sort of a panic reaction or more of a case of feeling of hopelessness, you know, or the, some of us are just feeling out of sorts. Sometimes on a particular something that we had planned for for that day didn't go right or according to how we want it to come out, this will then interfere with our everyday thinking. That goes for anybody, right? For people with autism, however, some of us will take longer than others to process that information that was given or even some form of data that was given to us. You know, this is because we filter out the less, filter out less inputs. So some of it will then become unfiltered and in turn it may, we may experience while we're doing this, we are facing so, so overwhelming and tends to lead to that state of overdrive or meltdowns, panic attack and sensory overload and all these other cluster of every bits and pieces that comes with us in that territory of autism and asperger's. But then again, as I said before, I am going to be hoping to explain more about anxiety and overthinking in my next video over. So if you're into wanting to know what I'm sharing with you all, let me know by the comment section below. But in saying this, basically, this will end for now. So just quick before I leave you is, is if you would like to join a discussion right now, I'm going to open the floorboard to you guys. Is what causes you to overthink certain things of the everyday situations that you may be facing, you know, what are your steps or procedures you do to overcome this? Maybe just to um, feel free to share this in the description below. So without further ado guys, thanks for your support, thanks for watching, do what love, love what you're doing.